Go. Welcome, everybody. Um, today for me is very special because, as you know, I love brandy and I love cognac. So this was such an exciting um, time for me to be in London because otherwise I would not have been able to have the samples today. So um, uh, like a double whammy for me today. Um, I'd like to introduce Eric. Eric was is a cellar master at Hein, and he was born in 1962. He, 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 he got a degree in enology, followed by his military service in Germany as an officer in the army. And he first worked in Cognac for in, in 1985, where he was in charge of um, Pinot de Sercherin production. He was then the cellar master at Monet for three years. And then Monet was um, acquired by Hennessy in 1991. He became responsible for the liaison between Hennessy and the suppliers, the wine growers, the distillers, the whole bank. Shoot. And he was also a member of the Hennessy tasting team. 1999, Eric joined Hein as the seller, seller master and consequently also became the production manager. Bernard Hein, who, is officially, who officially retired at the end of 2001, spent his last few years at Hein, passing on the secrets, which we're going to be tasting this afternoon, of the Hein philosophy and his art of blending to Eric. So today, Eric is responsible for assembling the exceptional blends of Hein cognac and for nurturing as they age their valuable casts of Jardinac matured and the early landed Grand Champagne vintage cognacs. Quite a mouthful. He's also a director of Hein Estates and Vineyards. And um, we look forward to the tasting, Eric. And um, as somebody, as Ken remarked earlier on, he didn't know that there was a cognac, cognac specifically for um, smoking cigars. So I'd love you to just to tell us a little bit about that in between the tasting. Over to you. Good afternoon, everybody. Everything is uh, correct for all connections? Yep. OK, I hope so. So thank you so much for, for the introduction. It was, it was very precise, and uh, it was totally true. So thank you so much. Uh, sorry, I, I don't have all the, all the pictures of, of, of all, all the, we say, the participants. But anyway, I believe if you have the, the, the right connection, it's, it's the best. For, for my side, I don't have everything, but anyway, if you are me, that's good. And if you have some, uh, some, uh, the image also quite, quite nice. So um, today, uh, if I don't make any mistakes, uh, let me, let me know if I, if I do something wrong. But anyway, we have one hour uh, all together uh, with the presentation of uh, our five uh, different products. Um, uh, we have the, the rare, the homage, and the antique, the two XOs plus three bonnets. Uh, is it true? Yes, all good. Yes, that's what we've got in our bottles. We've lost Eric. Can somebody phone Eric and just ask him if he can reconnect? Yes, well, on, on the case. Sorry, sorry about that. In the meantime, while we're reconnecting with Eric, um, if you have any questions during the presentation, please just put them in the chat box and um, we'll have a look at them and get Eric to make it more clear or answer any questions that anybody might have.
or at least there's movement. We don't have sound yet, but there's a bit of movement. So I just had Herrick on the phone. Um, he's gonna try to reconnect with his phone because uh, signal in, in Jarnac is absolutely horrible. So he'll be back. Kitri, sorry, comment ça se fait que je n'entends pas maintenant, moi ah. Oui, 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 je t'entends, Eric. C'est bon Ok. Impeccable. C'est bon, là Ouais. Bon, allez, ok, donc je close celui-là et je mets mon portable. Tant pis, ça va être comme ça. C'est pas grave. Désolé, mais là, on a une petite connexion. Bon, sorry. Do you hear me All... Hello, hello. One, two, three. Yes, Is it good? we can hear you, Eric. Yes, we can. Uh, okay, sorry. Uh, and, have... and at least you're moving now. Just now yeah. you weren't moving at all. You were sitting so still. Uh, <laughs> no, no, but, uh, sorry, if I, I don't understand everything. I'm not the big geek anyway, but so I have just my my small uh, my small mo mo mobile. But anyway, we could we could continue anyway. So uh, <laughs> I, I I I just to, to maybe to repeat a little bit. So thank you so much and good afternoon everybody. So thank you so much for the introduction. It was quite clear and totally precise about me. So no mistakes. That's good. <laughs> So uh, we have we, we had one hour all together, and it's a good opportunity for me, or for definitely uh, to, to to present and to speak um, about uh, five products of our range, the main the main ones. I mean, uh, the rare, the homage, the antique, the two XOs, plus the three uh, the three Bonoi, the O the O six, O eight, and ten. So before to uh, to speak and to explain and uh, and to let you discover some more details uh, about uh, every product. I want really to make a small introduction about the style, about the philosophy, not about the cognac, of course, definitely not, but about our, our cognacs in general. So Hein is a, is a very special style for a couple of reasons, not a lot, but just three of them, very, very important. The first is the terroir. Of course, we only work with Champagne, Grand and Petit for the finesse. That's the, 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 the first element. The second, we distill our wines with the lees. The lees, they deliver, they deliver the body, they deliver sweetness and they deliver richness and also uh, uh, more or less something a little buttery. So it's, it, it falls your, your mouth. So it's something to deliver the, the body and the sweetness and then when we hedge our cognac, okay, okay. We, we, okay. Oh, there is okay. a. Eric, éteins ton ordinateur. Oui, j'ai vu. J'ai vu, j'ai vu. Sorry. Good. Is it good? Good. All good. Okay, good. So, and the third element is the aging. During the aging, of course, we uh, we need uh, we need uh, wood and we need oak wood. But in general, the houses of cognac they use the limousine oak wood uh, historically for one reason because the forest of the limousine they are very near from the cognac region, so it was quite uh, easy and, uh, and 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 efficient for them to, to to get the trees from something not so far. But the limousine oak trees, they deliver something robust, uh, robust tannins and polyphenol. And for the style of fine, uh, which is based on, the, on, on something very, very elegant, uh, very fine, uh, very floral, it's something we want to avoid. We want, and, and, and we prefer to have the wood uh, from the, 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 the forest from the north of France, which deliver um, very, very fine and very delicate uh, tannins and polyphenol. And these trees or the forest, they are known with fine grain oak, oak tree. Uh, so these three elements, if you had champagne for the finesse, lees for the body and, and, and delicate, uh, delicate wood from the fine grain oak, uh, fine grain oak, 
you have the style of fine. And if you have a look about all the other houses of cognac, these three elements, they are never together. So Hein is totally unique uh, to add these three elements. Uh, the, the Hein style uh, is, very, is very elegant, uh, very, um, very delicate for these three reasons. And of course, if you have a look about the, about the bottles in general, uh, the, the colors, they are not so dark, but quite pale, uh, because we don't need to have so much wood uh, because the wood, the wood is necessary for the aging. The wood is necessary uh, to get maturity. Definitely, yes. But if the wood is too present, of course, the wood, as as it's a strong element, uh, it could hide some finesse, some bouquet, and and and, and we don't want to hide the the, the 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 quality we have from the grape from the raw material. So I believe that the, the, the elements from the warm material, I mean the grapes uh, or, the, or, or, the, or the wine, and that we get from the wood, they should be at the same level. Otherwise, if the wood is too, is too uh, present, it could hide. And of course, uh, it, it cover uh, it covers everything. It's the reason why uh, our cognac, they are paler, because they are less rich in, in, in wood, just that we need to, to uh, we say, to support the aromas, but never to cover them. So it's the Hein style, and 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 at the end, uh, if you if, when when you put uh, and when you you taste the cognac, the Hein, they are very easy to drink for these reasons because the wood is less important, and and because we uh, we push ahead, uh, I would say the, the the fruitiness and the very uh, the very velvet uh, element for the, for the for the for, for the palette. That's the Hein style in general, not only for one product but. For all all the product, because when when I get the, the cognac uh, from the pot still, it's uh, for for the time being it is the distillation period. Uh, I don't know to be honest uh, when we get the, the, the samples if it should be to make uh, a VSOP in a couple of years or uh, to 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 make a, an antique XO in twenty years or to be to become something something older. So everything is made for the same uh, in, in the, for the same way for the same uh, purpose, more or less, and we have the same aim. The aim is to make something very easy to drink and with a very uh, wide palette of aromas and, 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 a, and a very rich, uh, and a very rich uh, concentration in aromas. That's the Heinz style. Do you have any question? Is it, is it clear? Because, because in, in fact, it's, it's not so common for the, for, for the cognacs. But these three elements is not so much to, I would say, to remember. So champagne, lees, fine grain of wood, and then, then you have the, I would say, you have the, the key elements to, uh, to define and to understand the Einstein. Is it something new or may I, I have to introduce or maybe to explain a little more on one, uh, on one uh, point? Do I continue? Yes, please, Eric. Um, yes. But I, sorry, but I just have a question. The VSOP, how long has that aged? The, uh, as you know, the, the, the minimum by the law is four exactly. years. Uh, but when we speak about, about four years, it's the, the youngest in the batch, the youngest, yeah. the youngest batch in the blend, sorry. And the average could be more, definitely. But the youngest, the youngest should be, should be four, like for the XO10. But the average uh, could could be more. Uh, that, that also we have also to to, to uh, understand that the year they are they are very different uh, because the the raw is wine and and the quality of the wine is not only for the cognac but for the the wine worldwide it's up and down it depends on the year. Some years they they hedge uh, faster than others, and it's very it's very I would say it's very common that some sometimes for the same impression some cognac they could have. Six, they could be six years old, and to get the same average, some because they they they, they hedge faster, it, it could be only four. So the, the hedge in the cognac is not so so I would say so easy to uh, to appreciate for the first uh, for the first. So but the, but by the law, the minimum is four, definitely. Yes, definitely. And there's no VS. Ryan doesn't make a VS. No, we don't make any VS. No, no. Thank you. No, and if we don't make any VS, it's not because. Uh, uh, it was uh, just a commercial decision. No, it's because the VS is younger. And uh, as I mentioned, we only work with Grand and Petit Champagne. 
Grand Petit Champagne, they are fine, they are very delicate, but they need more time to reach maturity. I don't know why, but it's, that's the truth, it's the nature. So to make a VS from, from a Champagne, it's a little nonsense because it's still too young, it's still too fresh and, and, and sometimes too aggressive uh, in comparison with some other district like you find for an example, and uh, Hennessy, for an example, they make their VS, but in large majority, it, it comes from the fin bois. But it's normal because they, 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 they could do that, this, uh, this quality from the fin bois because they, they have reached maturity before the champagne. That, that, that is the reason. And, and on, the, on the market, you don't have uh, a lot of uh, VS champagne. Uh, if you want to, to make a VS champagne, uh, or you have to, to, to make a VS with a, with a cognac older than four. So what is, what is the sense? There is no sense. And, and, and it's, it, it's, it's more expensive. So there is no, no reason to be, to be honest. Yeah, thank you. So should I start? Quality by quality, and then you, can, you could stop me. Huh? Anyway, no problem, no problem. So we have the first, we have the, the rare. So the rare, I just showed the, 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 the bottle. So the rare is, uh, is, a, is, a, is a quality launch uh, 40 years, yes, 40, 40 years ago, more or less. So it's a fin champagne. Uh, it's a fin champagne. Champ fin champagne means minimum 50% of grand champagne. And this rare VSOP, have a look about the, the color. It's very, it's very goldy. It's not so dark, and it's it's a very very fruity uh, product. It's very well balanced. Uh, I believe, as a cellar master, it is the most complicated quality to elaborate. Uh, some people they they, they 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 believe that to make to make a cognac, it's more difficult to make an old cognac. In fact, not. Uh, the, the youngest cognac or the youngest uh, the youngest qualities are, I would say, more difficult to achieve because we are still, I would say, under the influence of the vintage. Uh, after 20 or 25 years to make the the, 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 the XO or, or quality above, of course, it was it was a result of selection of selection year after year. So we have just selected the best for this product for to make a VSOP. So we have to play again and, and, and still with the, with, the, with, the, with the year, with the vintages. And I had just uh, explained before, uh, some they, 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 they hedge faster than some others. So to make a rare is more complicated. And, uh, and, and I am quite uh, happy to, with, with this quality because it's a very, very nice one. So even if it's not an old, old cognac, it's very, it's very mild, very round, very fruity. Uh, on the nose, uh, very rich with a hint of, uh, of still of vanilla because it's not an old old cognac. So the vanilla is present in the in the wood, uh, in the in the in the young cognac. After it becomes more spicy and 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 the, and, the, and the vanilla uh, goes away. Uh, but in that one, it's not the case. We have still the hint of the of the vanilla on the nose. It's very floral. And very fruity, so it's an it's a, it's an expression of a very we say complex aroma. And you have the wood, but the wood is under the the, the, the wood the wood is behind the 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 the, 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 the fruitiness and the and the floral the floral hints or impression. For the taste, you have the same, the same, the same impression. It's just the expression of the, of the. How we say? It's the, the you replicate the, the nose, on on, on your tongue. Especially, it 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 fills your mouth. Do you have any question? Do you have, how do you how do you feel it for the, the people that have the, the samples? Any question about uh, about that uh, that quality? So you, you have to understand that the the, the rare recipe, the rare recipe, even it's if if it's not an old old cognac, 
should be very easy to drink and very mild. A lot of product, a lot of cognac, they could be hard and they could be, I would say, rustic or aggressive. It's something I want to avoid anyway. So there is no aggressivity, no harshness, no bitterness. That's that, that is the that is the, the, the I would say the style of the of the rare. And it's not easy. You have to you have to trust me. So how many different elements would there be in the blend? How many different sort of bio barrels are you starting off with or provenances within the Grand and Fin Champagne? It, de it, it depends of uh, it depends of the of the blend. It could to to, to be honest, uh, as a, as an average, it could be the the minimum could be fifteen and uh, and and the max thirty depends. It depends of the of the volume. It depends of the of the of the batch. And it depends on the year, but it's a it's a it's an idea between yes, 15 and, and 30. Thank you. Some some uh, some cognac they come from our proper estates because uh, during the, the introduction you have heard that I am also uh, in charge of the of the estates. So one third of our needs uh, comes from our proper estates. The rest uh, we purchase. Uh, from the trade. Uh, we have contracts with uh, suppliers, with uh, distiller and, and, and white growers. So it's a, it's a mix uh, to, for the rare and for the other. It's a mix uh, with the other vis we produce on our estates and that we uh, purchase from the, from the, from the suppliers. But, but at time, we never purchase pre-aged cognac. Uh, everything we purchase is made with the wood, with the with the wine, or with the just distill, just the distillate, but never uh, never hedge cognac. Uh, we are in charge, and we check and we control the hedging from the starting point to the to, to the blending. It's how we say the, the, the it's it's very it's crucial to um, to maintain the consistency in terms of uh, of style, because if you want to if you want to um, how we say to maintain consistency, you have to be in charge of the. Of the of the life of the cognac, I mean the wall the wall aging, in terms of wood, in terms of uh, a reduction of the of the cognac and and and, and work definitely because uh, because it takes time, uh, and when you and when you you buy from the trade uh, pre hedged cognac, you never know sometimes what what happens before, so mm -hmm. and 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 you don't uh, I would say you don't find when you are looking for sometimes so that's the that's the reason sounds like buying a second-hand car sorry i said it sounds like buying a second-hand car or a second-hand yeah, yeah. barrel you need to know its provenance or what, what its history has been true 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 but to to to, to, to be to be honest uh, year after year uh, we work with the same uh, we work with the same people more or less uh, because because you, you, you have to understand that Hein, the Hein style is very special in the world of the, of the cognac. And the, the people, they elaborate the, the cognac for us. Uh, they, they do something special. First, because it, it comes only from Grand and Petit Champagne, and then they have to distill with the lease if they distill themselves. Uh, and and the, the people they distill with the lease, they are, they, they are a, a, a minority in, in, in the cognac. So it's a good, uh, it's a good starting. And then, the people they 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 use uh, fine grain oak wood. They are also a minority. So if you want really, if you want to be sure of the final result, anyway, you have to do your the, the job <laughs> yourself. Otherwise, it could be it could be difficult. So it's the reason why we work with the same people because they have, we have a quite strict quality charter. So they follow, and they know us very well and it's a more or less a very strong relationship between between them and us and year after year we we, we continue with, to work with, with the same people otherwise it's too complicated to make uh, to make this such uh, this such contact to be to be honest so it was the it was the rare vsop the second we have the antique xo antique xo is uh, a time it's the iconic, it's the iconic uh, quality since uh, one century. Uh, this quality antique XO was launched in uh, in 1920, so it's more or less uh, one century ago. Uh, and uh, when you travel 
Uh, okay, it's not the, the right time, no, with the, with the COVID, definitely, because we don't travel anymore. But anyway, when we travel, <laughs> it was in the past. Uh, everywhere you find uh, you find hind the people they they, they 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 speak about antic because it's the it's the iconic uh, product since a long long time, and uh, the antique XO is a grand champagne. Uh, the the fin champagne was only the rare. Now all the other products are only grand champagne, so the the, the, the grand cru. So the antique XO, in terms of age, as an average, is a twenty years old cognac. And the youngest batch, I, I, I spoke, uh, I just explained a little bit before about the, minim, the minimum age. The minimum age for, for the XO is 10 years. Uh, but the, 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 the youngest I use more or less in the antique is 13, 14 years. But the average of, of, of the blend is 20. So the, young, the, the younger cognac, like the rare VSOP, they were more on the fruitiness, on the florolins and, 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 and expression now. Uh, we have something different. We are more on spices, uh, liquorice, uh, something uh, like a little peppery. It could be whole port impression, uh, liquorice, uh, leather. So something very complex uh, with a lot of, uh, of, uh, of uh, I would say, more oxidized elements. And on your mouth, it's very, very complicated and very, very long. So they have to taste. Is very is very present, and it stay in your mouth for a long time. So that is that is the that is the the antique antique XO. Mm. The presence of wood is a little more. It's not because they are extra made to to get more wood. No, it's because it's older. And as you as you know, during the time we have the the, the evaporation. And during the evaporation, uh, we, lo we lose alcohol, but we concentrate the other elements. And one of the elements we concentrate a lot is the wood. So we concentrate more or less every year by 2, 2.5%. So you could imagine between, between, uh, between the, how we say, the distillation period and, 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 uh, and 20 years old. Uh, cognac, but we concentrate a lot. So the, the, the present of wood is a little more. Of course, it, it's a little also darker. Uh, it, it's it's richer and you have more you have it's something it fills more your mouth. It's also on the nose. Also, it's uh, a little uh, we say um, uh, a little jammy sometimes, and uh, and honey, honey and jammy is something we 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 get also from the nose. And it's very, very complex. That I, it's that I love the complexity of this uh, of this product. Do you agree? And there is, do, do you, do you feel something aggressive on your nose or not, or is it just uh, something perfume and? Uh, I'm sorry, I don't hear you. Uh, sorry, I was cut. I didn't hear you. And I'm, I'm just saying that I think it's much more complex and there's much more depth on the um, XO than there was on the VSOP, which is what one expects, obviously. Uh, <clears throat> the age. During, during, during the time, uh, there is two big factors. One, concentration of the elements because, because evaporation, so we concentrate the elements. The second, oxidation, and also, I would say, a combination between all the different molecules. Uh, and in fact, you know, during the time, all the molecules, you, you, the new molecule, you, I would say, that you get, they are, they are bigger. And as they are bigger, of course, they, 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 they make something rounder, and you are totally right, it fills more your mouth. It, it's like something with more body, and it's totally the, the, the result. It's totally chemistry. There is, no, there is no secret behind that, but it is the truth, it is nature, definitely. Of course, definitely, you are totally right. It's a big, big difference. 
and when 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 you you have a sip, of course, it stays a very very long time, and 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 with the same with the same uh, we see there is no fluctuations. It's one time or it's it's very straight. Of course, it's it's a lot a lot more complex. They, they definitely yes. I feel it today. I feel it very, uh, very honey on the nose. It depends when you taste it. It could be in the, it could be before, before the lunch, after the lunch, uh, at the end of the day. Uh, everything changed all the time. But now I could tell you it's uh, very honey. I'm getting something oh. almost savory alongside the sweetness, which I didn't get on the first one. I think it's all to do with the complexity. It's lovely. Thank you. Thank you. But the, the 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 rare the rare is it's not sweet the the rare has because it's very fruity there is a certain sweetness also but that it's not it's not the same definitely it's not the same that one that one is richer definitely yeah yeah, yeah. more complex so it was it was anti kick so uh, the number three the the third that I, that I uh, I present today is the is the homage XO. Homage uh, is, um, is a blend that I launched, that I elaborated 10 years ago. And the homage uh, is homage to the former British style. Uh, as you know, the, the, Brit the British people with the Scandinavian people more or less uh, have built and, 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 and launched the cognac worldwide a couple of centuries ago. So, and Two centuries ago, or three centuries ago, the the hind, the hind, not the hind, but the cognac style was was, I would say, more floral than now. Uh, it they were all paler, and if you if you remember the 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 the, the category VSOP, the, the 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 P means pale. So the cognac before they were they were paler than now. And, and at Hein, we want to keep this history because our roots, uh, the, our roots uh, come from England. And in that blend, uh, I, I wanted, when I, I elaborate that blend, I wanted to, to, to make something with a homage to the former British style. So it's an XO, Grand Champagne. And I have selected the, 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 the most floral, uh, the finest uh, eau de vie from Grand Champagne that we have in our uh, warehouses. And I finished the, the blend with uh, some vintages we continue to age in UK, the early landed cognac, the very well-known early landed cognac. So it's a very, very pale XO. Have a look about, again, about the, uh, we say, the, the color. It's very, very pale. Normally, normally in general, the, the, the XO, they are very dark because rich in wood. This one is very, uh, is very, I would say, is very light in wood, definitely, but it extra made because the more you have the wood, the less you have the fruitiness and, 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 and for all impression. So it's, it's very, very, very light. It's very, very floral. It's like perfume. There is no influence or just a, a very small influence of, uh, of the wood, it's totally extra made. So my 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 aim was really to replicate than the 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 the, the, the former uh, British people or the former houses uh, cognac owners uh, did in the past. So it's 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 really to replicate something that the people they, they did before. I lo I like it. I love it. Uh, but you have to trust me, it's very, very difficult because to elaborate this such uh, product, you have to distill uh, very, very fine wines and you have to hedge this cognac just a little in new hook wood and, 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 and you have to fill the rest of the, of the batch in all the wines because you have to, to, to hedge your cognac with a slight amount of, uh, of, of wood, but not so much. If you want to keep the fruitiness and not to have uh, too much wood uh, to, uh, I would say, to cover the, 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 other, the other very fine and very, 
very delicate uh, elements from the from from the wine, from the from the grapes, from the terroir. And if you compare the homage and the antique, of course you have big difference in in, in terms of color, but you have also a big difference in terms of uh, of uh, of impression. On the nose, it's uh, it's 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 uh, it's very very important. In antique, you have to to sum up more or less, you have the wood, some more or less, and 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 for the homage, you have the the, the fruitiness. How you feel it? What is your own uh, own impression? Another point also, the, the homage is a little younger than the antique. The age of the homage is between 15 and 16 max. Uh, be, because if it's if it's an older cognac, the wood could take a larger part or a bitter part. And in that case, you, you lose a little bit the, the quality of the uh, of the fruit, of the quality of the of the raw material. Eric, uh, can you say a few words about the early landed and like the story? Okay, just, okay, early, early landed. Hein is known since a long, long time uh, for, the, for, for, their, for their vintages. In general, the cognac is, um, uh, is, is known for their blends, VS, VSOP, XO. We mix different years, we mix different batches uh, to, uh, to make year after year the same product in terms of consistency for the taste and for, and, for, and, and for the nose. The same for the champagne, the sparkling wine, for example. Uh, but our raw material is wine. So every year we do harvest. And of course, uh, because everything depends on the, on the weather. Some years they are exceptional and sometimes some they are poor or just normal. The, the, best, the best years, if you only put onto the, mar the, the market the cognac from only one year, you could sell as a vintage, like for the wines, the same. So in that case, you put on, on the label, you put a date. In cognac, some people, some houses of cognac, they had some cognac as vintages. But don't forget it that Hein was English at the beginning. Of course, our foundator came from, from the Dorset. And the business of Hein for a long, a long, long time and till now was also with, with UK. And one or two centuries ago, the people, the British people, they purchased cognac from, from Jarnac, from the cognac area at Hein, and they hedged their cognac in the docks in London, Bristol, uh, Glasgow, somewhere. And the, and we have continued, we continue the, the I would say the, the tradition, but now the law, the regulation change, of course. And the cognac, we continue to hedge in some bonds in UK because they are vintages when they, 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 they I would say, they go from France, they continue as vintages in England, but in that case, they are called early landed vintage cognac because they are landed quite early in their life. So early landed means they, 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 they are pushed to UK in, 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 their, in, in their first years. And they stay in UK more or less uh, 20 years, and then they come back here in, in Jarnac. And this cognac, they are re they released uh, on, on, the, on the market after 20 years as vintages. But in that case, if they, they stay more or less 15 to 18 years in UK, uh, in addition, you have on the label vintage cognac early landed, and you have the and, and you have the, the mention of age in England, and this cognac age in uh, in UK, they get uh, a, a, a specific uh, a specific uh, impression of citrusy orange peel something like that, and to finish the blend of homage, I use some vintages early landed, uh, specifically specifically to to deliver. This uh, so special, I would say, UK UK taste or or, or, or British taste. That is I, I do. Do I reply to your question, uh, Kitri? Thank you. So, homage, homage. It's it's uh, it's 
a rarity in the world of the cognac. A, uh, an XO, so light, so floral on the nose, so impressive on the nose. Uh, it's uh, there is no other, there is no concurrence because it's so so complicated to do. And tell me if I want to purchase eau de vies today from the from the spot market to make this quality, I just to tell you impossible because nobody make cognac for this such quality or for this such uh, typicity. If you don't make your own cognac. You don't have any chance to make uh, this uh, this product. Is the reason why we hedge in our in our warehouses here the cognac more or less for this for this style in uh, in, uh, in general. That's the hind that's the hind the hind touch. It's really the DNA uh, the the DNA of hind. Uh, very very light and very delicate cognac. And that's that's the, the that's the signature. More than the more than the antique, even if the antique is a, is the iconic product. Any questions about these two uh, these two XOs? Is it clear? Even if uh, homage is quite a, a new product and on the market only since uh, ten years roughly. Okay. If you don't have any question, I could start now with the with the 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 the, the range of uh, of Bonneuil, which is. Uh, uh, very, it's a special approach uh, and, and a special product. So when we speak about cognac, thank you so much. Very clear, Eric. Merci bien. Thank you, Patricia. Thanks a lot. If I if, if I don't explain so so well, please and tell me I could be wrong sometimes. Anyway, so we we I, I spoke about the the rare and the two XOs, which are um, uh, which are blends, and uh, and and no. We have three different bottles of domain. So at Hein, we have uh, currently we have more than 100 hectares of Grand Champagne, and we have also uh, beside Petit Champagne. The the most important estate we have, or the largest estate of Hein uh, in Grand Champagne, is based on the vicinity of the on the parish of Bonneuil. Bonneuil means good eye because there is a very nice view from this from this part of uh, of Grand Champagne, and and Bonneuil uh, uh, is a, is more or less in the really in the heart of the Grand Champagne uh, district. The soils they are terrific there, and ten years ago I have the idea. I know it's so nice there. Why do, do we, we don't? I would say why we don't make any specific cognac from that terroir. So I have the idea to release onto the market cognac from only from this estate, from the, the best year, unblended. So the bonheur, the, 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 we say the, 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 the definition of the bonheur is uh, it's, it's a single estate. It's a single year because it's a vintage. It's a single spot because it comes from, from this three, it comes from the same parcel, the same spot in, in, in the, and it's a single batch. We roughly, I select roughly 20 different casks, not more, so you could, you could understand it's not so much huh, in, in terms of volume. It's just more or less uh, 9,000 9, uh, bottles each. And I only select the best years. We started uh, to, to release this bonheur, it was with the, the, the year, uh, 05, 2005. Now it's uh, out of stock. We don't have any more, and we have con we continue with 06, 08, and 10. And why not the 07 and 09? Because the year, for my opinion, it it wasn't good enough uh, to reason to the market. I I believe it should be the best of the best, and if the year is not good, we we don't release it. So we have today the, the 06, the 08, and the and the 10. So this cognac, they are only more or less, they are only aged for eight, nine years, not more. Because I want really to, I would say, I want really to uh, uh, to present the cognac with the, the with the, the, the quality, the properties of the year and of the terroir. So it's not. It, it's really a domain product, like in the Grand Chateau, the Grand Chateau from, from Medoc, for an example. It's really 
wine from Ottawa, wine from Chateau Latour, from Chateau Margaux. It's really the expression of the terroir and of course of the year, because they are not in charge of the year, it's more the, of, the, of, the, of the weather, it's more the God, but anyway. So, but the, the, the vintage is, 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 the, is the mix between terroir and, 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 the, and the weather. And, and, the, and the domaine Bonneuil Cognac is strictly the same. It is the same approach. It's not a blend, it's just a domaine product from the best years. So we have the O, the O6, the O8 and the 10th. Uh, they come, these three, from the same spot. Uh, if, you, if you come here to visit us, I could, uh, I could drive you there. I know where they are. It's, uh, it's a part of our estate, very nice and very, uh, very nice slope. Uh, where the, the, the upper soil is very poor, we have only more or less 10 centimeters of soil, and then we have the rocks and, and, and the, and the, I would say, and the chalky stones. And, and, and if you have a look again about the, the cognac, they are very pale in terms of color. They, they are very, I would say, pale, or we could consider them as a little poor, for example. Because again, like for the homage, I don't want to have too much wood. I want really to keep the qualities and the, and the, and, and, and the, the properties of the, of the soil and of the, of the weather. If you have too much wood, of course, you could lose something. So these three, even if it comes, they come from the same spot, they are different. And the differences, uh, these, these are differences of the, uh, of the vintage. So you have the, the, o, the, o, the O6, for me, as a first approach, it's more on the exotic fruits. Exotic fruits. It was a sunny year, so it's it's wrong. It could be a little a little heavy in comparison with the two others, but it's very it's very very sunny, very round. There is more body. The the O8 is my favorite. Uh, the O8 is is more on citrusy uh, and the citrusy uh, impression. With, um, with a hint of, uh, or the taste of cranberry. Totally unusual for the cognac. Uh, in the cognac, uh, we, we have more pear, we have more, uh, I would say, yellow or white fruits. But something red, they are totally unusual or, or uncommon. And this one is on the, on the, on the citrusy, uh, you have uh, cranberry that I, and a little bit also licorice. I like it because very unusual. And the 10, the 10 is very, very fruity, very fruity, very impressive on the nose. And we are, we are more, I, I feel something like melon, like a tangerine, like pear. Uh, it's an expression of fruitiness more than the, the two others. So all of them, all these three, they are totally different. Uh, and, and it's the, I would say, it's the, the mystery of the vintage, like for the wine. Uh, so we're on the, we are really on the, same, uh, on the same level. So when I explain, it's, it's that I try to, um, to make today. But when we speak about Bonneuil Cognacs, uh, I use more the, the, the term, the word uh, that we use for the wine than for a cognac, because it's totally a, a different approach. And, uh, and, and, and today, uh, in the cognac, uh, in the cognac world, I believe, uh, correct me if I am wrong, but I believe that we are the, the own uh, house of cognac to, um, I would say, to let you and discover this such, uh, this such product from, from a domain specifically, specifically, and from when you're unblended, unblended. Just right. to, uh, is it right, Petri? Good. Absolutely. Okay, thank you, thank you. So what is your feeling about these three? Do, do you agree with me? Uh, do you have any, any uh, other questions or I would say remarks about these, uh, these cognacs? Or is it, uh, is it, is it uh, I would say something surprising in terms of, uh, term of product? Because of course it's totally different than the other cognac, which are 99% uh, blend, blends. Uh, but this one, they are, uh, they are totally unique and, and, and I just told you that, okay, I select 20 different casts, 20 different casts is nothing, but when it's done, it's done. When we, are, we have sold everything out of stock, 
finish. So it just, uh, it just, uh, it just a very, it's a niche for us. It's a niche offer. <laughs> For me, I think it's it's very interesting to taste uh, first the blends and then the individual uh, vintages because one doesn't think that there's such a big ver um, a variation in vintages in particular uh, products that are distilled. Yeah. Um, it's not like wine where you can actually um, easily distinguish, but here it is very clear that they're completely different and that's the, what's really so lovely about trying these? Thank you, Eric, for sharing these with us. Thank you, thank you so much. And and it, it, it's uh, I, I believe it's it's the beginning of of the history in terms of uh, of, uh, of offer from from our house. Uh, and uh, as we have a couple of other estates, I believe it's something we want to enlarge a little bit as an offer because 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 Bonneuil, even if Bonneuil is in Grand Champagne, we have uh, two others. Uh, estates in Grand Champagne. I was uh, this morning is on one uh, of these where we distill uh, because we have also uh, distillers there. And, and, and the terroir, even if it's all, again in Grand Champagne, it, it, it's different. And of course the cognac, they are different. So in the very near future, you will have some, uh, some, um, some, new, some new offer in terms of, uh, but all the time in small quantities. We don't want to make so much, just to, uh, we say, just to, uh, I would say to, to, to present the best of the best from every year, batch after batch, not more. Eric, uh, Liz wants to know what vintages are coming up after 2010. 12. Well, so now yeah, be yeah, because 11, 11, was, 11 was a quite short, uh, I would say quite short year in, in terms of volume, I mean, huh? uh, of yield. Uh, and it was not so complex. Um, the condition of harvesting wasn't so good because we, we get some rain. So it wasn't the best of the best. Uh, 2012 is very, very good. So the, 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 the next will be uh, 2012, definitely, definitely, in a, in a very short time, uh, beginning of the next year, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And if, yeah, I believe you have understood our, I would say, uh, or my aim uh, is really to, to, to make the best. If it's not a good year, with, where is the, the meaning to just offer something with a date? It's crazy. So just for high just for 20 barrels. So no, there is no sense. So it's, uh, it, should be, it should be something rare, but it should be the best. That's, that, that's it. And for, yeah. And, 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 and you have also understood that I don't want to edge too much because after 10 years, sometimes the, 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 the cognac, they turn uh, 10 or 12 years, they turn to become something like, like the side of, of XO. I mean, there is more wood and, 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 and the fruitiness goes away. And I want really to get, uh, to, to, to get and, and to keep the fruitiness is the reason why we, we don't edge more than, than nine years. In, 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 in barrels, of course, definitely. And, and this cognac, uh, they continue to hedge till they to be bottled in, uh, on, in, 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 in the estates. So definitely in the, in the, not in the warehouses of the house of pine, but in the, in, in, in the warehouses of cab or cellars of the, of the estate. And Eric, um, uh, Liz also wants to know whether you um, age all the elements individually or before it's blended, or are there also some that are um, aged together afterwards? No, they, they, they continue to age all individually. Uh, I, when we make, we don't speak about, about Bonnet anyway, but about, about, uh, about the, the, the blends, uh, we we do the we do the final blends a uh, couple of months before to be bottling definitely and and uh, even if I make sometimes mother blend mother blend means something it's a pre blend which represents 80 85 percent of the final blend which uh, will become of course the, the 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 final product in the bottles uh, and this final blend is made a couple of months before to be bottled. And before, one year before, sometimes I make a mother blend to, I would say, to prepare and, and, and to have more time to marry all the elements. But anyway, before, 
all the batches. No, no, they continue to uh, we say to uh, to uh, to make their own life uh, separately. Uh, because because when when I have to make a blend, I should have the very wide palette of offer. And if you if you if you start to 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 blend from the beginning, you you, you decrease more or less the the. the your possibility of uh, to have some different things. So the more you have, the the, the best uh, is the is the offer to make the or the I would say the the, the facilities to make to make the blend. No, no, they, even even if if a blend is quite if a batch is quite small because sometimes we have some supply suppliers that are not so big. Uh, we say uh, wine growers, and sometimes it's just a couple of casts. But anyway. There is no problem. They stay. Uh, they stay alone, and I prefer to continue and to uh, to to follow them year after year. They are, we say, their aging and their evolution. Because sometimes you never know. As it's totally natural, uh, natural products. Sometimes from a starting point, uh, evolution could be like that, but it could decrease. Sometimes, okay, you are not so happy with, but anyway, it happens. And sometimes they they, they increase. And, and to be honest, you never know. So if you if you mix at the beginning, of course, you you could lose some some good surprising. So it's the reason why we let them uh, all all separately uh, during during the ages. Yeah. And um, Eric, there's also a question from Wink to ask: uh, Why are these uh, last three higher alcohol, uh, more alcoholic than the blends? Because the the rare and the homage and the antique are all forty percent, and these are yes. 40, 42 and something. Uh, it, 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 it's it's very easy. Uh, forty, as you know, uh, forty percent is the normal average for the cognac historically. Uh, for the bonnet, as you know, here uh, because we distill more or less with seventy percent, and and we and we and we sell at forty. So we have to decrease thirty percent, and of course, uh, naturally, we don't have time. So it's the reason why we, time by time, we reduce the alcohol strength by addition of water. And when I make the the Domenheim, of course, we do the same. At the end, uh, instead to sell it at forty, at the end, if it's quite near from forty, okay, we stop it. Uh, that's it. So it could be 41, it could be 40 point something, or it could be 42. So just just because the, 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 the less you had the water, the less you, you make an operation, the less you have a risk, to be honest, because because that, that's it's uh, because the to reduce to reduce a cognac, uh, honestly, if you want to keep the, the quality, you have to do it very carefully, step by step. Uh, so it takes time. It's the reason why, uh, if you have for Nick for, for a VSOP, if you have four or five years, you have to to make uh, some reduction, but you don't have so much time. So for the bonheur, you have nine years more or less. So we have time to do. But the less you do at the end, if it's necessary to sell at forty instead of forty-two, to be honest, blind, I don't make a big difference. So I would prefer to to stay and stop at forty-two. But it could be forty-one. So there is no there is no reason, more or less, no specific reason, except that one. And uh, Roshna would like to know what characteristics do you look for in the vintage to produce a single domain bonnet? Sorry. What characteristics do you look for in a vintage when you when you when you're bottling the single vintage um, bonnets? Uh, uh, but the the bonnet, the bonnet, as I explained, they should be the best, huh? and they should uh, they should be the the, the 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 expression of the terroir, the expression of the terroir. Um, if I have a look about the, the last, well, this year is too early, is too early definitely. Uh, the last was a not so good year and the previous very, very good year. We, have, we, we could have an idea, but we, we decide at the, at the end. We, we don't make any decision before. It, it needs time, it needs time. It's, it's, not, it's, it's, not, it's, it's not only for the bonnet, but for all the cognac, sometimes, Sometimes it it takes time to uh, to have a clear, I would say, 
a clear uh, idea to, to for, for that I just uh, previously explained. Sometimes we have some different, uh, we say, evolution. Uh, and, and in the, <laughs> just also to, 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 to let you to understand the, the VS, we don't make any VS, but the VS, they are only on cognac. And it's very, it's very, it's very early in their life. And of course, some people, when, when they make the VS, they don't have any idea, which is the, the potential of the future because they, they, they mix before. So it's yeah. a shame but anyway, that's life. Yeah. 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 And, and this is a question for me. Do you, do you, um, what do you do with barrels that you taste and decide is not of the quality that you would like to put in your products? Do you set it off or what happens to that? Uh, uh, for you us, know the ones that go down. Yes, I, I understand. Firstly, it's something it's it's not happens very very often for one reason. Uh, one third of uh, of our needs um, is is produced by our own uh, our own um, estates. So we we check everything and we are charge all the quality. So if we don't make any mistake, if we work quite well, we should have quite bad bad news or bad uh, bad qualities first the second for the rest uh, we we work with uh, with suppliers but as i just mentioned a little bit before we work with the same people more or less with very strong contracts so they know very well uh, that we need and when we uh, when we uh, we take a new supplier uh, or every time me or one of, of my uh, deputy we do an audit technical audit about how they, 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 they do the wine, how they, they, they distill, if they distill their own, where are the parcels, where are the spots, and where they produce their wine. So I have a look about the soil, I have a look about the terroir, that's very important. So in that case, if you know very well the people, if you deliver them a quality charter, and because we have quite strong relationship, it means they, if they have a problem, they phone me and they ask some advices and so, we don't have any, any any bad mistakes because we, we we try to work with this with the best spot with the best people. So of course it could happen. Uh, uh, I would say uh, an accident or something like it. It, it, it could happen, but it's yes. See, I I came here to be honest. It's, it is the truth. I came here in '99, so I am the cellar master since more than 20 years. I just refused two batches here, only two batches. When I refused, I mean during the delivery. I didn't accept the the, 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 the track and they and they, and they went back to the, yeah. the supply, but only two. So it just means that normally not because there is no surprise because we are we are involved, if you want, uh, in, in in their production. Even if it's if it's not our own production, we we uh, we say we we are so so near with our suppliers. So it's 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 like a big family if you want. So so it's it's quite it's quite easy for us. Thank you. But, Are there any but, other but, questions? Oh, sorry, Eric, you want to go? No, no, I, I just, I just, just also, just a, a, a small addition. It depends also of the year. If, if the year they are very good or normal, there is no problem. But if a year is very, very poor, of course, sometimes we, 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 we could have some bad surprising, but not because it's, it's a fault of a supplier, but because it's a poor year. And yeah. you have to understand if it rains every day for, for, for three weeks during the harvest period, you could imagine that sometime we could have some, some bad news or bad, bad surprising, it could happen. So it's uh, sometimes we have to, 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 to decide if we, if we take it or not, but if it's not the fault, of course, uh, but yeah. it, we try to avoid it. To be honest. Yeah. Are there any other questions from anybody? And I think Ken actually summed it up by saying it, it was actually wonderful to have this opportunity to taste these elegant um, cognacs. And we really have to thank you for that, Eric. And thanks for your time uh, for sharing these with us. To me, it's the first time also that I've tasted so many of them in one row. So that is really lovely. And, and I enjoyed it and I'm sure we all did. So um, thank you very, very much.